Good afternoon, friends. How are you doing today? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. So I've been here just waiting and giving you guys a little 15 minutes um, reprieve. I know some of you could have finished class at five. And um, just give you a little, a little bit of time to <clears throat> refresh yourselves and get into the mood of mathematics. So what I did in the meantime, I projected something that I wanted you to look at for me. We should, we should finish you know, hopefully this today. If not, um, worst case scenario, I'll use a piece of Friday to do it. Uh, but remember, we're having a little test on Friday. I need to, I need to get you guys to see what it is that you guys have learned. I'm calling it my end of unit test. So I really hope that you guys are preparing yourselves, um, the recordings, the handouts, the whole work. Now this end of unit test is not gonna be like an, a, a, a two hour, a three hour test. Eh? Um, don't be surprised if I say half an hour or 45 minutes or an hour, or I can even say 15 minutes, you know? So that's what I will do on Friday. So I'll be in there next week this time. God's spirit in our lives. We'll be starting a new topic. And um, I think I may want to move into sequence and series. Um, that contains binomial theorem, arithmetic progression, and geometric progression. As I said to you in the last class, I want to get the big boys out of the way. The bigger boys in... Um, in unit one out of the way. There are some small ones there that I can use a one class to just run through, but these big boys, I'll have to use a series of classes to get them out of the way. So I want to just get those big ones out of the way and then we can move into completing this module. And remember, it's Kate, so you're gonna have your modular exam. So, um, when I give it a unit test, um, the modular exam can come from anywhere. All right, so. Okay, so you said that you guys are fine. Um, I'm happy that you guys are okay and um, I'm ready. Um, I'm ready like Freddy. Tonight is gonna be, oh Lord. Tonight again is gonna be a, a, a worky worky night. By the way, did we do this last class? We, we, we never did this last class, right? No, no sir. sir. Okay, yeah, forgive me here. Um, I'm teaching another course that, you know, do pretty much something similar to what it is that you're doing. They do indices and logarithms, um, which is really the same thing. Indices and exponents, exponents and indices are the same terms. Right, so I was doing this to them on the weekend, so that's why I asked the question. I know I asked the question last class because it's so fresh in my headspace. All right. So we have been working and we have been um, doing some stuff. Um, we did a whole lot of calculations. Uh, let me confess something to you. So early this morning, I have been up from about after, after 12, like about 12.40, I think it was when I got up. And I went back to bed um, quite about 6 o'clock, minutes to 6 o'clock, then jump up at 8 o'clock and I've been up sitting and marking. And I go to class every night and I say, guys, are you understanding? Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I gave my mix in as the test. And um, some have been doing very well. And I said very well, 90 odd percent, um, you know, 60 odd percent. But some of them getting cash tree grade. I'm going to play them games there. So I'm saying to you, for those of you, again, who are not following, yours is a responsibility to say, Sir Shand, 
I'm not seeing this. Sersha, I how you get that again. But don't leave my class without having a fulsome understanding as to what is happening. Please, I beg of you. Okay. Um, I trust I don't have to stop the class to say to you, you need to participate, you need to participate, you need to answer questions. Um, I don't want that tonight. Let us just go. All right. So we have we have a question here. And the question is, 5 raised to the x power equals 10. 5 raised to the x power equals 10. Hmm. 5 raised to the x power equals 10. It's an equation. And we want to find a value of x that will make the left-hand side equals to the right-hand side. We want to find a value of x. That will make the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. All right, no problem. Let us do. Let us play a guessing game. We're going to play a guessing game. We're going to guess x to be equals to zero. Anything raised to the power of zero is one. Is one. 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 But we don't have one here. We have ten. So I have to push up this now to two. I mean to one. But five to the first power is five. Still not enough. Still not enough. So again, put it up to x to 2. 5 squares is 25. We're past it. We're gone past it. So it implies that our unknown lies between 1 and 2. See, here? How you know the unknown, sir? Because the unknown appears to x. So the unknown lies between 1 and 2. So what I'm saying to you is looking at this, I can tell you that the value for my answer is between... One and two is greater than one, but it's less than two. Sometimes they go into a multiplicative test and they give you questions like these and ask you to, to select the most appropriate answer. Use common sense. Play the guessing game. Randomly substitute some values in there, just like what I did here, zero, one, and two. And so, but it, it, it has to be greater than zero. It has to be greater than one. Uh-oh, pass it. It's less than two. The answer lies between one and two. Chances are you may find only one answer in the A, B, C, D that lies between one and two. Hooray for you. You know, you just select that answer. Guarantee you must be right. Once you do this guessing part correctly, that is. If there are two things there, only two answers that lie between one and two, you are in a better position now to increase the possibility of you getting a good grade for the team because remember each response is at 25 percent and when you have only two responses now either c or d is the answer it pushes up your chance of a 50 percent no chance that you get it right all right and then you can just in, in a case where you have two of the answers being that you'll have to work it out so let us see if we can do the working out it says to determine the actual <laughs> to determine the actual value To determine the actual value of x, we need what is wrong with me? We need to do the following. We need to do the following. Now, <clears throat> I want us to, to think about that. I want us to think about this a little longer. Um, that there is something that we have to do. Something is preventing something from coming out. So we have to do something just a little bit more to see exactly what is preventing. Um, not really preventing, but to find out the exact value of my, of my unknown, all right? So I would recommend that we do two different things. Two different things. And um, I'm going to give you those two little things. I'm going to give them to you right now. One, 
I want you to check. I want you to check to see if the right hand side of the equation. Check to see if the right hand side of the equation can be written in the same base as the left hand side of the equation. Check to see if the right hand side of the equation can be written in the same base as the left hand side of the equation. Two, we need to take the logarithm of both sides. We need to take the logarithm of both sides. We need to take the logarithm of both sides. So one, we're going to check to see if the right hand side of the equation can be written in the same base as for the left hand side. We need to check to see the right hand side of the equation can be written in the same base as for the left hand side. And two, we need to take the logarithm of both sides. Now watch it, recall, log to the base A of B to the N is equal to N log to the base A of B. Log to the base A of B to the N is equal to N log to the base A of B. Log to the base A of B to the N is equal to N log to the base A of B. That's the law that we looked at on Friday, I believe it was. Yeah, on Friday. So look at what I'm gonna do. Remember the question, <clears throat> five to the X is equal to 10. I'm going to say x log 5 is equal to log 10, right? So that's what we're doing. We're taking the logarithms of both sides. We're taking the logarithms of both sides. So we're going to have x log 5 is equal to log 10. x log 5 is equal to log 10, all right? And then we're going to be dividing both sides by log 5 in order to find the unknown x. So why again we dividing by log five? So we can leave x alone on one side. Remember, you know, our aim is to find the value of x. So I'm going to divide both sides by log five so that I can cancel out the log fives on this side. See it right here, so? And when I do that, then I'm able now to divide log 10 by log five. When I have my log 10 divided by log five, right here, so? On the calculator, I'm going to get 1.43. This is where I'm going to press pause. I'm going to press pause here. I'm still going to have this thing projected. So if you want to read it in at your own leisure, you can. But I'm pressing pause because I want you to fetch your calculator for me. I want to fetch your calculator for me. And when you do that, I want you to work log 10 divided by log 5 and tell me what you get if you agree with the answer that I have there. Start for me, please. Remember, for those of you who don't have a calculator, it's one of the requirements for the class. You must have a calculator so that you can do the workout with me in class. It's very important. One point four three. You got one point four three? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So one point four three is correct. Is there anybody in the class that didn't get the one point four three? Sir, my knowledge is one point four. Oh. My calculator only says one. Yeah, so you need to change the setting of the calculator to, to more than one decimal place. The calculator is running up to one decimal place. What brand calculator are you using, please? Casio. Which of them? It's like A to N. Okay, press mode for me, please. That's to the top right. You have, mm -hmm. a, little you have a little flat trap ball in that calculator? Flat ball. The trap ball, the up and down button and the sideways button. Yeah. All right. And you press mode? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry. Sir. Yeah, right. Um, when you do that, 
Ah, help me now for that closer. I'm scroll down and see. Mm -mm. Oh, Jesus. I'm trying to remember the configuration for that one. When you press mode. All right, do me a favor. Let's let try this the other way. Flip the calculator around and see if you see a little breather space hole that says reset at the back. No, sir. Sir, um, it's on mine. Is it, I have created initializing the calculator contrast setting and mode initialization. Yeah, but if it, um, what I don't remember there is, is the, is the, I know you press mode and you go in there to change it to um, the restriction, but oh, it just, it just eludes me a while ago, the configuration of, of the 82 FX, the FX 82 setting. All right, um, it will come back to me there is. But yeah, so you get 1.4, it's supposed to be 1.43. Supposed to be 1.43. Um, exactly, it soon come to me. Now, you might not problem honey bun trees. All right, now, so, so that's what we do. So our 1.43 is an answer that I was kind of expecting. I know the answer was greater than one, but I also know that the answer was less than two. I know the answer was greater than one, but I know that the answer was, would have been less than two. So me plus equal on my calculator is 1.43. You're not question that because I, I, about that may expect the answer supposed to be. No. <clears throat> if I had pressed the calculator and got zero point something, let me, me know say that wrong up. I know that is wrong. And it had got my answer to be greater than two. Two or greater. I know that my answer would have been wrong again. So this is a good way for you to have an idea of what your final answer is going to be like. An idea of what your final answer is going to be like. Somebody saying something? Is there a question? No, sir. Okay, all right. Now, hmm. I need to bring across a point. I need to bring across a point. Uh, I need to bring across a point. Um, all right. Do for me, please. Write for me. 2 to the x equals 4, 2 to the x equals 4, and look at what I have for the solution and try work that for me, please. I give you 5 to the x equals 10, try 2 raised to the x equals 4 for me and do that. I give you 2 minutes.
Three, two. Two. All right, very good. But okay, hold that for me. I'm giving the others a chance. Um, and then we're going to have a conversation about that. So I'm giving, I'm giving another two minutes for the others who are not speaking to me. I'm an opportunity to work it. Sir? Yes, please. Sir, we are talking at the chat, me, guys. You talking uh, in the chat? Take a cut, yeah. I don't hear you. Oh, you, you say that I'm supposed to check the chat? Yeah. You, you know you know me and chat are already right on. All right. Um oh yeah. Um okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's correct. All right, cool, cool. All right. Another minute and a half. Sir, I got twelve. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Very good. I also got two. I got two, sir. Very nice, very nice. All right, guys, so um, most of you by now would have gotten two for your answer. True or false? True. Very nice. Um, and I'm happy, I'm happy about that. I'm happy that you guys actually are able to evaluate the question and, and, and got it too. No. Sure. Yes, please. So you can check, check your chats, please, um, privately. Okay. Yeah, sure. I no no tea. Um because um within an exam setting, that's not going to be allowed. You see what I'm saying? Sir, it's because I don't have a calculator at the moment. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So, um, the what I want you to do for me, guys, please. I'm going to see if I can beg on, beg on, beg on, beg on, beg on. See if I can save up some money and go buy one calculator. But please do not buy no Kenko. Um. Me no want me no want to know how that. I want a calculator that um actually works for you guys, right? We're going to be doing calculus. Um, when you, before you buy the calculator, just link me here so we can talk about it. It's best for you to spend about four thousand dollars on a calculator, or a three thousand five hundred dollars on a calculator, and no say that calculator can carry through 
unit one and unit two and university. Then go by a calculator, we have to go every six months, you have to go change it. Um, real tough. All right, let's go. So, in me proving this, in me proving this, if I put five raised to the 1.43, I'm going to get 9.98, which is approximately equal to 10, which is what our question would have asked us to do. 5 to the x equals 10. So we'd have gotten our 5 to the x equals 10. And you know why we get this approximation here, the 9.98? is because we rounded off. You remember the answer wasn't exactly 1.43. It was 1.43 and change. Right? So when we throw off the little one cent, the more point now, that's, <clears throat> that's why when we, we try using our answer, we're getting the we're getting the nine point nine eight. Now, if matter of fact, try this for me. Those of you who have calculators, try this. Let me show you that even with the change, you can get the same answer. <clears throat> log five divided by log ten, and tell me what you get. Log five divided by log ten. Log five divided by log. Sorry, sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. It's supposed to be log 10 divided by log 5. My apologies. Log 10 divided by log 5. 1.43. All right. Good. Don't change it. Don't change that on the calculator. So every time you do a calculation, automatically your last answer is stored to your calculator. All right. Watch me now. So I'm going to ask you to press 5. Press 5 on the calculator. You are going to press either X to the Y, Y to the X, or the upside down Z on the calculator now to get to the power. So some calculators will have the upside down Z. Some calculators will have X to the Y. Some calculators have Y to the X. Press that for me. And then press ANS. But before sure. you press ANS. So sure, minus the X squared. No. Sir, I got 10. Very good. Not X squared. You have to press the upside down V. You have to press the X to the Y or the Y to the X. And then you're going to recall your last stored answer in your calculator um, by pressing A and S. Now, the A and S may be on the top key. If it is on the top key, just press it. But if it is on the submerged key, you have to press Shift in order to get it. And when you press Equal, you should get 10. Because what the calculator did was to evaluate all the decimal places and store the decimal places. So now when you recall in all those decimal places in your calculator, you'll get your exact 10. So you know your answer is right. So what's the point, sir? We, yeah, yeah, every time I come to class, I ask you to do them something. I'm in, a, I'm in a calculator. I am making a deliberate effort to show you how to use your calculator so that when you go into the exam and you get a question, you can actually double check your answer. Most of these questions that we're doing, you know, you can actually double check your answer by resubstituting to make sure that you're correct. To me, and it, and it does not take one minute for you to do that. If you know how to use a calculator in a jiffy, you can do it. So I press the upside down view. Um, press A and S. You recall in your answer. Press A and S to recall your answer, <clears throat> and then press equal. Ten. You got it. Yes, sir. Yes, I got it. Nice. All right, let me just check this thing here. All right, thank you, Miss Natalie. You're know, such a responsible student. Um, all right, thanks again. Um, I truly appreciate. I cannot, I cannot manage the the administrative part of the class in terms of the WhatsApp and and um, the group chat, and I mean, you guys are um, very responsible in that regard. Sir, please check the chat. Very responsible, and I really appreciate it. I don't feel no way about it because when you're gone on a teacher, and I've gone on, gone on, gone on, me not to remember say, um, chat up with the chick. It's a, it's a weakness that I have, and I need to work on it to improve, um, you know, 
my involvement in terms of checking the chat um, periodically, but I'm asking you to help me. So thank you for that. And also, you know, very responsible um, WhatsApp admins, you know, you guys manage that aspect of it pretty well and I really appreciate it. All right, so, so that's, how we, that's how we prove our stuff, right? Now, when I asked you to evaluate two, X, two to the X equals four, what did you use? Did you use the, the same method as we did up here? Was it this, was it, was it this method that you used? Sorry, I did it both ways. Okay, very good. So, um, so two to the X is equal to four, and we're using the logarithms. We're gonna say X log two equals log four. And then we're going to divide both sides by log two in order to find an unknown x. So I'm going to have x is equal to log four divided by log two, and log four divided by log two is equal to two. Sir. Uh huh. Sir, I have a calculator now. Can you go over um how to use it? Okay, you know, have a calculator. You want to go over? So press on me log ten divided by log four. So do this. Log five. Log 10 divided by log 5. Let me know when you get that. Yes, sir. All right. Then you're just going to go ahead now, not touching anything else. Press 5 on the calculator for me now. When you press 5, you're going to look for one of three things. X raised to the Y power, Y raised to the X power, or the upside down V, round about in the middle of the top half of the calculator. Let me know when they've done that. Yes, sir. And then you're going to press answer. Now, if answer is on the, 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 the raised part of the key, you just press that. But if it is submerged, you have to press shift in order to get the answer. So however the configuration is on your calculator, press answer for me and then press equal and tell me what you get. Wait, wait, I'm actually waiting on you here, so you need to respond to me. Yes, sir. Um, we get 0 0.3979. Mm -mm. You need to go through that calculator. Are we going to do that one day? So I'm a bit long time. Put, That's the point. <laughs> That's the point. All right, do me a favor. Turn it on and then turn it off for me, please. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I did that. All right, good. Start again. Log 10 divided by log 5. Yes, sir. Good. Then you're going to press the. What do you have? You have the upside down X? I mean, upside down V? Upside down V. No, sir. Do you have the X to the Y or Y to the X? X, X to 2. X power to 2. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's supposed to be the upside down V, or oh. mm -hmm. you see the you see the upside down V. Yes, sir. You might another one if you press. All right. Yes, sir. All right. You press it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Then again, press A N. No, no, no. You can yeah. You can press A N S. No, you're recalling your answer from before. Is the A N S button submerged or up on top? A N S. The bottom right hand side of the calculator. I don't have that. Well, that means the calculator is not good. Can you must have an answer button for it. Oh. You see it now? <laughs> the mere flavor. You find it? Take a picture of the calculator and put it in the group, please. Guys, I'm going to ask again, get your calculators, walk with your calculator from a class. I will show you one or two tricks in how to use a calculator. I know some of you know how to manipulate your calculators already, but you still can't because I can show you one or two more tricks with it. All right, I see something coming in on the phone. Let's hope that's you. Let me just check. Mm. Oh, it's a Texas instrument. Oh. 
you know me and text us already, right? All right. So it's when you look, it's when you see that minus button there, the last minus button on the to the bottom right. Your okay. ANS, your ANS is is above that button. So you have to press the second function, which is the top yellow button up there. Well, the only yellow button that you have up there That's in it. order to get that um something there. All right. So work with me now. You see where you see the seven to the left of the seven, you see the x squared. And above the x squared, you're going to see the upside down v. Yes, sir. All right, cool. So work with me now. So you can, oh, Lord. How oh, do you do this now? Are oh, we log button there? Oh, yeah, we see it under the second function. All right, do my favor now. Press log 10. <coughs> By the way, how you can the config was? Is it log 10 or 10 log? Which one you have to press first? Talk to me now. Sir, log 10. You're not, you're not alert, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you, you're not responding to me in real time. Log 10 divided by log 5. Yes, sir. You did the log 10 divided by log 5? Yes, sir. All right, good. Then no, that answer is temporarily stored in your calculator, all right? So you're gonna yes. press five for me now. Press five. Then you're gonna press the upside down V. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so you press the five, press the upside down V. Yes, sir. Press the second function button, the yellow button. Okay. And then press, where's the parentheses with the minus sign inside of it? Press that. And then yes. press equal. Where you get? Um, 1.432. You know, there's something right. All right, do me a favor. Um, <clears throat> let's go again. Press on me lock. Um, when you press lock, um, lock ten. What you get? So I think it's the issue with the graphic. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do with her now. Right, that's what I'm gonna do with her now. Um, Davidson, Tatiana, hello. No, it's either Tatiana. Hey, the same process that I have, and I do it so probably the mode or something. Oh, thanks, Chanchan. Tatiana, are you hearing me? Okay, I think she has some internet challenges because I was saying to her that she's not responding to me in real time. Um, is that she is she just logged out? When she comes back in, I will take her. All right, I'm think I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say that is her internet. So all right, let's go. <clears throat> so when she comes back in, I will and 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 or um, Shan Shan maybe can work with her for me, um, in that regard, since you have the same calculator. All right, so <clears throat> so what I was suggesting to you is. When we work two to the x equals four, and I use my logarithms, I'm still going to get two. And then someone says, sir, I did it both ways. I went ahead and wrote my right-hand side, because remember, no, you know, but after I serve the question, can I write the, well, this one, we're going to pretend as if we never know that we can write the right-hand side in the same base as this one. So we use the logarithms. And in this case, no. We can write both sides as a number in base two. And since the bases are the same, we can equate the powers. So it's so easy this, this one is. It's so much easier when it is that we can write it as the same, in, as the same base. 
All right, so it is that we can just go and do some, um, you know, equator stuff. Now, here, here what I wrote for you is a summary. When both sides of the equation can be written in the same base, then we can use either indices or logarithms. See it here, so let me just show you. See the side here? The four you can write in the same base like the one over here, so as two squares. So when the left-hand side and the right-hand side can be, written, can be written in the same base, we have a choice to use either indices or logarithms. We can use any of the two. So let's go again. When both sides of the equation can be written in the same base, then we can either use indices or logarithms to solve the equation. If on the other hand, only one side can be written to a base, then you must use logarithms to evaluate, to evaluate the question. See it here, so? The right-hand side here cannot be written in the same base as the left-hand side. Talk truth. Yes, Come on. So because it can't be written in the same base as for the left-hand side, I must use logarithms. And this is where I want you to go, which you're thinking, look at the something. It can't work. I can't write it in the same base. So it means that I must use logarithms. What's the point I'm making? If when you get a question like this, I use logarithms all the time, logarithms all the time will work. Logarithms all the time will work. However, if you have a question where you can write both left-hand side and right-hand side in the same base, in the same base, then you can go ahead and use indices. All you have to do is just convert it to the same base. And when you convert it to the same base, you just equate the powers. When you convert it to the same base, you just equate the powers. When you convert it to the same base, you equate the powers. All right? Since the base is the same, we equate the powers. Now, hear me out. Hear me out. Sometimes you may be able to convert. Sometimes they may give you a, a question where um, you can equate the powers too. So it works both ways. If the bases are the same, you equate the powers. If the powers are the same, you equate the bases. So that statement goes both ways. Both ways. So the summary is saying, once we have indices, once we have indices, it is lie. Once we have the question, and the question can be written, both sides of the equation can be written as a common index, and a common base, rather, then we can use indices, if we choose, or we can use logarithms, or better yet, we can use exponents, and we can use logarithms. It doesn't matter which one you use. Only when both sides can be written using the same base. If you are given a question where only one side can be written as a base raised on power, one side of the equation alone can be written as an index. Then you know, say, you must use logarithms. Am I clear right there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, there is somebody in the class. <laughs> there are some students in the class, more than one of you, <clears throat> who don't have a clue. Let me just talk about a while ago. Let me just shut off my face, you know. And you sit on the air loop and say, you can go and talk here because I don't know where you are talking about. You can watch recording. Well, for me, sir, I actually understand. So it's fine nice. if you don't hear from me right now. Nice. Yeah, but you see, what more you could tell me, do you know? It's when you understand, just unmute and say, yeah, man, sir, I get it. So I can hear different voices because how I do my online teaching is use voice recognition. Eh? So when when I hear somebody speak to me, um, I can say, okay, yeah, this person is always understanding. Is it this person alone? But when I hear different voices now come, I can say, yeah, okay, the class are understand. So if you understand, just unmute and say, boy, sir, yeah, me catch it, you know, sir, me, me really understand. And then you can find out little one question, one or two times, and just put another mix in and see if we can answer the little question, you know? So we can, we can, we can, we can just max it out. 
for those of you, I'm very concerned. I know what is going to happen Friday of this week, all being well. All the deficiencies for this unit that we're wrapping up is going to come to the fore. Because I'm going to say people with foolishness, and then no, I am going to get annoyed at you. You know why? Because I have been asking you every single class unmute your microphone, talk to me, let me know where you're not understanding. Are you understanding? And some of you still no one talk. So make sure that me just a beat up my gum and that when I give the test on Friday, that everybody get over 80%. I mean, can I say, yeah, move on into the sequence and series. Make sure, make sure. Sir, yes, um, for the test on Friday, is it going to be like at the start of class? No, or... man, I wouldn't get it at the start of class. I know people okay. are trying to, to the hustle and bustle to get in. No, man, I'll be trying to figure that everybody is here. All right? So, for those of you who are struggling and refuse to speak, hmm. oh, boy. Oh uh, boy, let's continue. So, when both sides of the equation can be written in the same base, then we can use other indices or logarithms. It no matter. It doesn't matter which of them we use. Once you can write the 20 minutes or something, it doesn't matter. You know, say no. If you can't write the 20 minutes or the same something, you know, it does matter no. Because you must use logarithms. The first one you can use any one of the two. But you know, look at it. Which is a common denominator here? Logarithms. Logarithms work in the first one and logarithms alone work in the second one. So it suggests that since logarithms is a common denominator, whichever question I get of this nature is logarithms I can use. All right, I think some of you already know. I mean, think some of enough time for redeeming myself by asking the questions. I have 12 questions here. I will not do all 12 questions. I have 11 questions here. I will not do 11, all 11 questions in class. I'm going to ask you to go through the first five questions for me. Then I'm going to select one or two of the other questions to do. And then we'll do that. So I am going to give you five questions. I'm going to give you 10 minutes. 10 minutes to work these questions. Start for me, please.
Why? The silence in the class is deafening. Let me let me hope that you guys are working. Are you okay? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Can somebody please respond? Sir, are you not hearing us? Sir, you're not hearing us. Hello, somebody? Anybody? I have to get that. Sir? I'm seeing in the chat that says, I'm not, I'm not hearing the door. Talk again. Sorry, you're hearing me? Oh, no. Something went wrong. Hold on. Um, are you hearing me now? Can, can Sir, I... we're hearing you. Can, um, hold on. Can somebody speak again, please? Hi, please. sir. I'm not hearing. All right. Um, and uh, somebody can speak again, please. Oh, you're hearing me, but um, I'm not. Talk again, and see if I can't hear you. No. Hi, sir. No, my computer's not going to use that. Won't work. Won't work. Let me start it out.
All right, I'm trying to do this one more time. Can you somebody speak to me, please? Hello, sir. Sir, are you hearing me? My check, my check. Can someone speak, please? Hello, sir. Oh, finally. Jeez, I'm father. No, sir. Sorry, you might, you might mute the thing or something? No, I know. I mean, I, I muted when I gave you the stuff, but um, I was passing the system. I'm, I'm, I'm seated, but my hand hit the microphone, the, 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 the cord for the headset and, and pull it out. And then I felt some things kind of start shaking in it. But you know, all things ended well. I'm gonna hear you guys now again. Thank you. All right. Um, so yes, I'm seeing one or two answers in the in the chat. So we're um, supposed to send it in the chat? No, 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 no. Um, not necessarily. Um, so number one is talk to me now. Number one is. The answer for number one is 1.63. 1.63 is correct. Very good. And number two? 0 0.86. 0 0.86. Good. Number three? 1.166. Number four? Number four? 2.77. 2.77. Very good. Number five? Sir, I don't do that yet. Sorry. That right. is 0. So it, 0. 0.789. 0. 0.89. What? For number five? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't think so. You got three. Sir, I get 0. 0.4. 0. Sir, I got 0. 0.79. No, 0. 0.79. 0. 0.4 what? Sir, I need to take it off. Let me look again. Zero. Sir, a negative 0 0.10, I'm getting it. Sir, I rolled it up to 0 0.4, 0 .4. it was 0 0.395. 0 0.10. Sir, I'm going to put my answer in the chat because I'm about to download something. All right, good. So that number five in the chat is, 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 is good, Campbell. Matthew, um, that answer is goodish, if you know what I mean. Um, is it round enough? That is a problem, Matthew. Um, so somebody needs to check their number five. I get two correct answers for number five already. Somebody needs to check their number five. You know, guys, I'm going to tell you, this is very good. Um, when I say I'm impressed, um, check that point four for me, please. Uh -huh. Check that one. Check that one again. I'm very impressed. No, I bet you that you can get number six. I bet you that you can get number six. Continue working. We're going to work more than that. I thought I would have... Would have been struggling with the one to five, but you guys did very well. Don't worry about it. I will go through the question. I just want to give you an opportunity. I don't want to come to class and, and show up and do the questions. I know I know how to do the questions already. I want to give you an opportunity in class to get the questions done. Up, huh? So I will go through the solutions with you. Just continue working. So I'm going to give you another, what time is it now? 6.55. I'm giving you another 10 minutes to see how far you can go with these questions. Very good. Keep up the good work. Sir. 
Yeah, I'm hearing you. Is it negative um, 0 0.15? 0 .05? Say it again, negative what? 0 0.105. Yeah, yeah, that, can, that could work, yeah. Casey, you're, you're correct, very nice. Wow, very nice, Miss Kiss. Very nice. Move on to seven. Congrats, Neely. Very nice. So I was the answer for um number five, ninety zero point one zero five. Was that answer? Yeah, yeah I got negative zero point one zero four, but um oh, okay. I, I, I won't kill you if it's one point one zero five. Sorry, very good.
All right, now, this silence is way too deafening. How far are we? Number eight, number nine. Number nine, all right, so you have two more to no, go. Number eight. Eight, all right. All right, as long as it's still there and that you're not falling asleep on me, I am fine. Janae, are you awake? Shante, are you awake? Yes, sir. What number? I was yes, sir. I'm awake, sir. I'm mm -hmm. awake. Matthew, you still awake? Monisha, you still awake? Yes, sir. So yeah. I'm number six alone, supposedly. Yes, sir. Um, Matthew, you're not awake because I came back and said, since you guys are doing so well, just continue the other questions. Yeah, well, I'm still on. No, man, you can't do that, man, Papa. No, man, you guys um, did very well, so I said to continue working. Um, Shan Shan, Shanil and Chanel? No, awake? Good. Green, awake? How was your awake? Yes, sir, awake. Okay, great, great, great. All right, continue working. Give me a couple more minutes. Um, because after this, I'm on to my final, final, final topic on the, this unit. And I want to start it so we can get some work in, uh, continue working. I, I'm, I'm right here.
All right. Sounds like enough time. So I'm seeing some answers. 0 0.72, 0. Ooh, I didn't get that phone number. Ooh, all right. So, all right, let's go. So, for, let me just do this. I think I need to do this here. <clears throat> All right, so let me do this here now. So going through pretty quickly, three to the x equals six. We're going to say three. We're, so, we're, sorry, we're going to say x log three is equals to log six, and then I'm going to divide both sides by log three. So I'm going to have x log three over log three is equals to log six over log three. And when I divide the logs, I'm going to have x is equals to log 6 divided by log 3. Oh, come on, not again. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, all right, cool. And then <clears throat> when I divide log 6 by log 3, I'm going to end up with 1.63. And the second one. Oh, not really the second one because I never did number two. Is there anybody having a problem with number two? I think I, I, I skipped that one. Anybody having a problem with number two? No, sir. No, okay. sir. Okay, all right, good. So I'm jumping to number three. I think I did just the odd numbers. I'm jumping to three, three. Someone is coming in. Who is that? Is that Tatiana? No, Kisana, what happened? Mm. I said I had a problem with number two. You had a problem with two? Yes, sir. All right, hold on. <clears throat> All right, so we'll say x x log five x log five is equal to log four. Sana, um, look at this one, Sana, please. X log, x log 5 is equal to log 4. And then I'm going to divide both sides by log 5. So I'm going to have log 5 right here, log 5 right there, log 4 up top, log 5 down here. And this is just x. And then look at what I have there. And then tell me if you. <clears throat> If you are with me, log five divided by log five, and this is log four divided by log five.
Um, are you with me, Safar Kasana? What you see? Hello, hello, Miss Green. You asked me a question. You're not talking to me. Yes, I understand. Okay. Never really get to do anything. None of the question them. Oh, me can't help it then, honey bunches. If I get the calculator, man, no man. Um, on Friday, please don't come up to class without the calculator. You must have the calculator. You get frustrated yourself. Trust me. You get frustrated yourself. You get frustrated yourself. And when everybody's gone ahead of you, you are going to be behind trying to know how to use a calculator. So please, guys, all of you, I beg of you, please, you have to get your calculators. You must. All right, let's go. I'm happy that you've got this one. Let's go. And of course, as per usual, I'll send it, just send the notes in the class so you can um, practice thereafter. So the other question was two to the two X is equal to five. Again, I'm going to be writing in the form log to the base A of B to the N is equal to N log to the base A of B. So this is going to become this two X is going to go in front. So it's the two X here, log two is equal to log five. And then we're dividing both sides by log two so that I can isolate my two x. And when I do that, dividing both sides by log two, I'm going to have two x is equal to log five divided by log two. Two x is equal to log five divided by log two. All right. And then my log five divided by log two is going to give me 2.3. 2.321. And when I divide that both sides by two, I'll end up with a 1.16 to three significant figures. And look at it for me, please. If you have a difficulty, if you didn't get that answer, you want something to be um, re explained, talk to me. Hello, somebody. Hello. Hey, can you repeat what is it, please? I'm just saying to you that now that I've worked um, the number three, I have it there and I'm asking if you didn't get the answer, just to speak to me so that I can go through it again, or if I can move on, but just let me know. Say something to me so I can know what to do. So I think everybody got the answer. Sir, move on. All right, cool. So enough to talk to me enough. I'm wasting time. And I said, I'm not waiting on to respond. All right, let's go. So we have four to the two X plus one. All right, guess what? Um, I think I want to move on to this one. I'm not going to do all of them. Um, Sir, I didn't understand the one before. Okay, so you see when you must talk to me one. All right, let's go. Four to the two X plus one is equal to three. Again, I'm using the same rule, the same rule. Everything in the power, we're going to go in front of. So this 2x plus 1 is going to go in front of that. Log 4 equals log 3. And remember, I can't write both sides of the equation using the same base as base 4. So I know I have to use logarithms. So I know I have to use logarithms. And then... I'm going to have my 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1 log 4 is equal to log 3. 2x plus 1 log 4 is equal to log 3. Then what we're going to be doing, we're going to divide both sides by log 4. We're dividing both sides by log 4. And when we do that, we are going to end up with, um, so the log 4 is cancelled. We're going to have log 3 divided by log 4. And that is going to be equal to the 2x plus 1. See here, log three divided by log four is equal to the two x plus one. When I evaluate log three over log four, I'm getting 0 0.7924. So all of this piece is equal to this, is equal to that. 
and then now I'm trying to isolate. Question? I'm trying to isolate my x, meaning that I want the x alone to be on one side. So this positive one will become a negative one when I subtract from both sides. So I'm going to have 0 0.7924 minus 1, which will give me a negative 0 0.207. But I don't want two x as my answer. I want x. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And that's why I ended up with a negative 0 0.104. In the answer, in the, in the chat, I'm seeing people putting down negative 0 0.105 as their response. All right? Um, it just, it's just how it is that you did your rounding off, why it ended up with a 0.5. So I really wouldn't um, kill you too much for that one. Are you okay with that one now? Yes, sir, thank you. No problem. So when you look at this other one here now, I can use one of the laws of indices that says when I'm multiplying and the bases are the same, I'm gonna add my powers. So I'm gonna add X plus x minus 1, c it right here, so, and put a base. So it's going to be a to the m, multiplied by a to the m, is equal to a to the m plus n, is equal to a to the m plus n. So it's going to be 5 to the x plus 5 to the x minus 1. And x plus x minus 1 is going to end up giving me 2x minus 1, which is this one here. You notice I'm talking about the 10? Because poor 10 can't move up anywhere. 10 is going to remain as it is. 10 is going to remain as it is. All right? So now that I have it in a form that I'm accustomed to be using, I'm going to say 2x minus 1 log 5 is equal to log 10. I have this in a format that I can use. So I'm going to have 2x minus 1 log of 5 is equal to log 10. And I'm going to divide both sides by my log 5. Why am I dividing my log 5? So that I can isolate my 2x minus 1. Remember, you know, the aim is to solve for the unknown. So I'm going to strip it of everything, just leaving my unknown eventually. So that's why I'm dividing both sides by log 5 to get rid of the log 5. Why divide, sir? Because the log 5 is being multiplied by the 2x minus 1. And the opposite of multiplication is division. So when I do that, I'm going to end up with I'm going to end up with 2x minus 1 is equal to log 10 divided by log 5. 2x minus 1 is equal to log 10 divided by log 5. And then when I evaluate log 10 divided by log 5, I'm going to get 1.43. I'm going to get 1.43. And then when I, sub when I add 1 to both sides, I'm going to end up with 2.43. So 2x is going to be equal to 2.43. And dividing both sides by 2, I'm going to end up with 1.22. In the answer, I'm seeing people getting 1.21. Um, again, it's just how it is that you did your rounding off. Let me tell you how I do calculations like these. Just like the example I gave you with the 5 to the x equals 10, um, whenever I'm doing calculations and I evaluate, say, log 10 divided by log 5, I use the stored answer in my calculator. Even though I may round it off, I don't round it off and then... Um, I roll it off in the book, but I don't throw away the, the, the values on the calculator and then re-enter the rounded value. I keep using my, 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 my values um, as it is. So therefore, my answer will be right up there with the, with, the, with, with, the, with the most precise response because I'm using all the values, all the decimal places from the computer or from the calculator. All right? So you can choose to do something like that. Any questions? No, sir. All right, good, thanks. All right, now I'm hearing the familiar voices responding and saying no, and I don't want anybody to, to, to say to me, oh, sir, Jesus, listen to the ones who, 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 who will talk in class. You see how many times I'm asking those of you who are not following to unmute your microphones and engage me in a conversation. I will stop the class to engage in a conversation. Sir, um, sir, I'm never do the two x something. Let's solve them um separately. Say it again. Say it again for me. You never do the two x something. Sir, I'm gonna solve them separately. Um, for the x, 
And let me just put them in the bracket. Um, is this one you're talking? Yeah. How oh, you solve them? Or you did? Or you did separately? Um, so I'm gonna solve for the five x part, and then the five x plus one. No, mummy, me not me, me, me not follow you. When you say solve them separately, where you do? If you get both of one, you just work with the one you alone. So, all right, so when we get for the 5x, I'm right in the bracket. And then we get for the 5x minus 1, write the value, I'm get for the x for the one there in the bracket. I'm going to just write them. All right, um, first thing, first thing, first thing is not 5x, it's 5 to the x power. And yes. this one is 5 to the x minus 1. Yeah, I, I, I just need to correct you. But the second thing, how you have to work for the value for the one year? Oh, you, you get the one year? Oh, you get the value for this? Walk me through it. Can you share your screen and write on your screen? Let me take the picture while I'm right, sir. Please. You send a picture of me? Sir, I'm gonna send it in. For you, for you, for you, for you. So um, check your WhatsApp, sir. Yeah, I'll check it in a few. Give me a minute, please.
Um, the purple will come for you here. Hello. Yes, sir. No, I'm just saying, no, I'm, I'm based on what I'm seeing in the WhatsApp, I'm saying that this is very illegal. Um, very, 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 very illegal. Um, and will not give you your your answer. All right, no, let me just let me just um, <clears throat> let me just highlight something here. You see, because this five race to the X boys be multiplied by five race to the X minus one, we can't separate um, any of the two to work out with the other one because this piece has to work in tandem with this piece so that the answer is equal to 10. So I have to work it with everything as a whole. I am not allowed to separate any of these. I'm not allowed to separate them. I cannot separate them. That is illegal. The pow pows will come for you. Illegal. So I have to first combine using the law, the laws of exponents. I have to first combine by saying when I'm multiplying and the bases are the same, I add my powers. Do you know on the summary I had to do the exponents first before I get into logarithm? Because I knew I was going to face these in, um, exponents right here again. And as a matter of fact, the last topic that I want to move into will include exponents. More exponents, as a matter of fact. Only exponents. I may have to use a little bit of logarithm at some point in time, but it in, in, involves a lot of exponents. So what I'm saying to you is, when I combine it, I'm going to get, when I'm multiplying, and the bases are the same, I'm going to add the powers. So when I'm adding the power, I'm going to get 5 to the x plus x minus 1 is going to be equal to 10. It's going to be equal to 10. And then I recognize I can add these two x's to give me 2x minus 1. And then I'm going to use the rule now as I would have normally used from before. This 2x minus 1, I put in front here, log 5 is equal to log 10. This 2x minus 1, log 5 is equal to log 10. And then I'm going to divide both sides by log 5. Then I'm dividing both sides by log 5. Why, sir? So that I can have my 2x minus 1 isolated on one side of the equation. Why, sir? So that I can eventually find the value of x so that I can eventually find the value of x. So it's going to be log 10 divided by log 5. It's going to be log 10 divided by log 5. Log 10 divided by log 5. The logs cancel out. The logs cancel out. And then I'm going to have 2x minus 1 is equal to all of this. See it here? I only wrote these lines here so that Nobody asks me when I send out the notes, sir, how you did cancel out that again? We can all see it. That's the only reason I write it out. I mean, I could move from here right down to here. But I'm showing you, telling you what it is that I'm doing. I'm showing it to you that I'm dividing both sides. I'm showing you the cancellation until I arrive at this point. Until I arrive at that point. When I arrive at that point, I'm then going to evaluate my log 10 divided by log 5. My log 10 divided by log 5 is 1.43. And the 1.43, I'm going to have 2x minus 1 is equal to 1.43. I want to find the value of x. So I am undoing, I'm undressing. I'm undressing the question. So this is a negative 1. In order to undress it, I need to add 1 to it to get rid of it. So because I add 1 to it on this side, to get rid of it, I have to add one on the other side. So it becomes 1.43 plus one, which is 2.43. So now I have two x is equal to 2.43, but this two is being multiplied by x. And the opposite of multiplication is division. 
So in order to undress that two from the x, I need now to divide both sides by two. And two x divided by two is x. And then I'm gonna have 2.43 divided by two to give me the 1.22. Any questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? No, sir. No, sir. All right. Um, I'm feeling a little uneasy. And I'm going to explain why I'm feeling uneasy. And I don't think it's because of the night class. And I'm not hungry. I had my dinner already. I'm feeling uneasy because I have some students in here who are who are at sea. Don't have a clue where is the nearest shore. Don't have a clue where is the nearest shore. But those students refuse to talk to me. It's because I've been a teacher longer than some of you have been on this earth. I know what I'm talking about. How do I get around that? Somebody tell me, please. How do I get around students not understanding, but they're not unmuted to say to me that they're not understanding? Please, anybody, somebody. What do I do? What do you suggest me doing? Sir, I'm not, I'm not sure enough there. No, but I need some suggestions now. Anybody else? Anybody has an, another suggestion? Sir, you can't do anything. No, but it's you know. And I think that's where that's where um I kind of feel away. Um I'm teaching and I, I'm not getting the vibes. Um and it's not on my side, you know. It's not on my side because you can clearly see that I have been so far very prepared for the class. Notes well typed up on not even handwritten. Very ready. But um I'm a little concerned and it's when a teacher has a desire for his students to do very well. And when a teacher has a desire to say that he wants at least I have to ouch, I have 22 students in the class and I want 20 grade ones. It's only craving. No, no, two grade ones more to know. We want 20 grade ones. So by any of us at 22, come in number of students in that class who no understand and no tell me see them not understand. But let me tell you something. Let me ever hear one of them talk about. I can't learn online because when Sir is talking and not understanding him, trust me, I will have a strong word with you. A strong, strong word with you. Online is what it is that we have, and we have to work with what it is that we have. It can want ox tail, but the pocket can only go to a piece of liver. Eat a liver, make it taste like ox tail. Online is what we have, and we have to use what it is that we have, students. Let me just think one final something with you. <laughs> I mean, I ask you, I tell you. You think if you did one class in the university and the, the lecturer goes to the class every minute and say, are you all understanding? All of the lecturer talk to themselves, the magwan, because the lecturers know at the end of the semester, then exam paper right already. I mean, I ask you. Me see lecturers already, I walk on down, you know. I say, hi, Dr. Sanjo Sanjo, so how are you? I'm fine, thank you. The doctor is going to the class, you know, the same class where you're in, you know, you think that, that lecturers when they say, Kessiana, come, come. Don't you have class you know? The lecturer stop and say, so how are you doing? How are you studying? Is everything is fine? Okay, later, I walk out of class and let you outside. And I say, oh, my teacher, good friend. I don't want to say they don't care. 
but because it's university, the sort of pedagogy that we use at Excelsior Community College, them use andragogy. So it means that the big people then, I forgot to take care of them own learning. They so much time to stop the class and I ask them if they talk to me. And they never hear, sir, um, you know, yeah, sir, we just, we just don't know how to do something and they end up talking. But my test will show and show me up and show you up. Um, which brings me to an, an, another point. You see, the, for the test on Friday, on the device, I forgot to turn, I forgot to turn on the camera for the device here. So um, it's not going to be a case where when you can sit down and when you have a collaboration and when you have having a friend's work, the questions for you. Mm -mm. And now that's keeping other shop here. So your cameras will have to be on and I can view my class sitting and looking at my cameras. Looking at your cameras or looking at your, your image, Jeez. All right. So on Friday for the 15, 20, half an hour, you're about, because it's not a whole lot of questions I'm going to give you because there are 20 plus of you. And I have to give you enough questions that I can mark and give you that feedback. I'm marking some papers you now with 10, 20 something students in the class, and it is giving me hell to finish marking from the screen. So I have to be very sensible in what I'm doing. So I won't give you 10 questions. I will give you no more than no more than five questions, five or less questions. All right? But your cameras will have to be on. I see what it is that you're doing. I'll show you how to upload, how to download the paper and how to upload the paper to me so that I can have a copy of the paper. I will mark and I will send back a copy of the paper to you. So it is that you can look at what it is that you're doing. This will tell me a true sense of those who are understanding. And I'm going to say to you, I will not tolerate any lame excuses, you know, because I've been giving you guys opportunities to speak to me. All right. With that said, there's no love lost. No love lost. Let's continue. Where are we now? Okay, we did that one. All right, so I want to do this one here. Um, this one has a very cute sense of humor. I mean, I look, in the answer, when I look at the answers in the, in the, in the WhatsApp group, mm -mm, in the chat, I recognize that so far, everybody's far off from this. Far, far, far off from this. Uh, yes, sure. So look at what is gonna happen here now. What is happening is, I have three to the x is equal to five to the x minus one. Sir, you never give me one like that. We have the unknown on both sides. I agree. And that's why I'm giving it to you now in class. So that when you go into the exam, you can't say never so one. But sir, I see you do the same thing like what you normally do. The method not change. That's what I'm trying to say to you. The method will never change. Look at what is happening. I'm having three to the x. And I'm taking the logarithms of both sides. It's going to be x log 3. See, Professor? x log 3. Log to the base a of b to the n is equal to n log to the base a. What in the power of a come down and multiply what in front of something? See, Professor? What in the power of the x of a come down and multiply in front of the something? So it's going to be x log 3. And it's going to be equal to? 5x minus 1 log 5. So I'm taking the logarithms of both sides, and in doing that, this is what I now end up with. Then I'm going to divide both sides by x minus 1 log 3. Oh. I'm going to rewrite this something here so that um, you guys can have a better understanding. And this is one of the things that I do, guys. Um, copy. So that you can have the full some understanding. So I really would appreciate if you do what it is that you're supposed to do.
Let's say I went over number seven and eight. What is the number seven and eight? Yes, sir. Skip out three questions. All right, so I'm going to you. I soon talk to you. So we divide in both sides by x minus one first. Be wrong with me here. I'm trying to do some color coding here to help you. All right, so look how I'm doing. So, so we 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 then divide both sides by x minus one first. So the x minus one that I divide in both sides here. So this is what was given. I don't think I should put this up here in blue. Anyway, um. So we divide in, I divide in both sides by x minus one first, right? And then followed by dividing both sides by log three. So it may end up with no x minus one log three. So when I do that, the log three cancel as you would have seen here and the x minus one cancels. So all I'm gonna be left with is x over x minus one is equal to log five over log three. See it right here, so? So that's what it is reduced to. So whenever you get a question where the unknown is on both sides, Best believe that you want this piece you want over here and this piece you want over here. So because you want this piece over this side and this piece over this side, you have to divide both sides by this and this to get rid of it. See here, x minus one log three, x minus one log three. So I'm gonna end up with x over x minus one is equal to log five over log three. And then I'm gonna evaluate log five divided by log three. Now, log 5 divided by log 3 is going to be 1.456. Sorry, 1.465. 1.465. And when I get this 1.465, tell me, whenever you have two fractions separated by an equal sign, what do you do always? First multiply. First multiply. Very good. Right? So every, every single time you have two fractions separated by an equal sign, if you don't know what else to do, cross multiply. Things will work itself out. Whenever you have two fractions separated by an equal sign, cross multiply. Two fractions separated by an equal sign, cross multiply. But sir, we have a question for you. When we work out log five divided by log three, sir, we never get 1.465 over one. We just get 1.465. Very good. And thank you for asking. So I just each up this divide by one here so that I can know that I have two fractions separated by this equal sign. Then, sir, if you divide both sides, if you divide this side by one, it's not going to change the value. No. One is known as the divisible identity. So any number divided by one, I'm going to get back that same number. Any number multiplied by one, I'm going to get that same number. All right? So this now times this to give me this x. 1.465 times x is 1.465x. And 1.465 times negative 1 is negative 1.465. What I'm trying to do at this point is to group 
my life terms all the x is one side and everything else the other side all the x is on one side and everything else on the other side look at what is happening this negative this positive 1.465x i'm going to subtract from both sides so it's going to be 1 minus 1.465x and i'm just going to have this negative 1.465 alone on the right hand side when I do this calculation, 1 minus 1.465, I'm going to have negative 0.465x. And of course, that is going to be equal to negative 1.465. When I divide two negative numbers, what do I get? Positive number. A positive number. A positive number. So negative 1.465 divided by negative 0.465 will give me a value that is approximately equal to. That's what the sign means. This sign means approximately equal to, approximately equal to 3.15. Very good, Matthew. Excellent, Matthew. Sir, and so, yes, please. Can you do about the part um, for the cross multiplier, please? Here, so? Yes, sir. All right. So, all right, now, um, do I have. Do I have something here? Um, all right, I don't have a tool that I can show you. All right, so whenever you have two fractions. You hear you are yes in Bujabanta? Oh yeah, hear me, I'm a, a mute or something. Okay. Why do our leaders pray? Because I'm of integrated much to do. Let's go. So I cannot actually put up myself. I actually know the artist of a song. Very good. All right, let's go. So I have two fractions separated by an equal sign, cross multiply. The one up here so multiply by one down here so. And this done so multiply by this up so. So I'm um, cross, and that's what it means by cross multiply. If you look at it, you can see the formation of an X. I'm cross multiplying top to bottom, bottom to top, top to bottom, bottom to top. All right. So this piece will multiply one times X will give me X, which is this X right here. And this. <laughs> Copy. Yes. Sir. Yes, please. Um, when you cross multiply and and you reach down to the bottom, the you know the bottom part, and it have x minus one. Is it like in a bracket? So when you when you multiply, you have to like expand. Yeah, you understand me, Charlie? Thank you. That's what you're asking me. Talk to me, no? That's what you're asking. Talk to me, that's what they're asking me. Look at the line I just put in. Right here, sir. That's what you're asking me. Yes, sir. So, yeah, so, like, yeah, so like when you go have to multiply, now you go have to multiply 1.46 times x. Then you go have to multiply 1.46 times negative 1. So you expand the bracket basically. Yeah. Very good at you. Yes, native dreadlocks. Yeah, go on with things. Very nice. So I'm actually cross multiplying. So I just so while you were asking the question, that's exactly what I was typing. That's why I saw that black box came up on the screen. Right? So great minds think alike. So what I'm saying to you is I'm cross multiplying. This one is going to multiply by this x right here. And then this 1.465, 1.465. Is going to be multiplied by the x minus one, which is right here. So all of this multiplied by x to give me all of this, and all of this multiplied by negative one to give me all of this. Oh, so you distributed it, okay? Very good. That's that's what I never saw. Very good, very good. Thank you, Tantan.
Excellent. All right. Um, I have some other questions here that I, well, not some other, one other question. I'm told that I, I skipped out. I did say I was going to all of them do, you know. Um, which one I skipped out? I skipped out number seven. Seven and four. Number four, I did. I never did number four? I never did number. No, sir, I did not do number. Seven, eight. I did eight. No, never did eight. But four on the same thing like like five. Four the same thing like five. You know. After the four, talk to me. No, sir. No, no sir. sir. Yeah. No, sir. Yeah. I mean, I can understand number seven. Cause number seven kind of looks. Number seven kind of looks strange. Yeah. Yeah. You can go to the one that we were doing before for a second, please. Hold on, hold on, one sure. It was coming very strong a while ago. What the ears? Yeah, go and get no money. Uh, I was asking if you could go back to the one that you were doing before, just for a second. That one? Yeah, um, yeah, don't last break. Yes. All right, thanks, sir. All right, All right, so with this 9x, sorry, 9 times 3 to the x is equal to 8. That is going to be done similar to the one where I have a 5 times a 5. Because that 9, I'm going to break up as 3 squares. That 9. I'm going to break up as three squares. And when I'm multiplying and the bases are the same, I'm going to be adding my powers. So that is going to be three raised to the two plus X. When I'm multiplying and the bases are the same, I'm going to be adding my powers. So that now becomes 3 raised to the 2 plus x equals 8. Are you in agreement with that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So what I'm going to say now is 2 plus x log 3, 2 plus x log 3 is going to be equal to log 8. 2 plus x log 3 is going to be equal to log 8. And then I'm going to divide both sides by log 3. Then I'm dividing both sides by log 3. And that is going to give it 2 plus x. log three divided by log three is equal to log eight over log three. Dividing both sides by log three, so I can get the two plus x alone on one side. Then no, I'm gonna divide, I'm gonna cancel out now my log three. Show you the cancellation for my log three. And then I'm going to have log 8 divided by log 3. Log 8 divided by log 3. So what I'm going to have now is 2 plus x is equal to log 8 divided by log 3. And 2 plus what is log 8 divided by log 3 equals to, please? 1.89. 1.89. And when I subtract 2 from 1.89, what do I get? Uh, 
Um, negative one point. Negative one point. One. Talk to me now. Negative uh, point one one. Negative point one one. I'm gonna divide both sides by two. What do I get? No, 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 no. Sorry, no, 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 no. I'm not dividing by two. Sorry, I'm not dividing by two. Yeah, subtracting two. Uh, right, I subtracting two. Yeah. No, it's, it's because I copied the stuff, and I had a two in front of the stuff, and I never took it off. So that's why. That's why it's not good to copy. You know, you copy and copy somebody's name. It's not good. Okay, and then you can just delete one of these answers since I have it here twice. Right. So was that zero point one one was the correct was the answer? Negative yes. zero point one one. Um, that's number seven. Oh, okay. Negative zero. Okay, you use um two decimal places. I use three. Um, see the. Sir, that's what it says in the calculator. What it says? Just negative zero point one. Total. No man. Put in, put in, put in, put in. Log eight divided by log three, and then when you get the answer, minus two and two, we get. Negative zero point one zero seven two one zero seven. Right. Oh, sorry, that. Yeah, that, that, that's what that's that's what I say. You know, when I do my calculation, one zero one zero seven. Uh, when I do my calculations, I just put everything one time in the calculator because I don't want to, I don't want to um to miss any of my values. So you have to be careful. Um, with the premature rounding off with your calculations. And especially when we move into statistics and you know, you, you have to be very careful with how it is that you round off. The premature rounding off will, will hurt you. All right. Um, anything else? I number just, eight. Number eight. Oh, you, you still want me to do number eight? You still yeah. really want me to do number eight? All right. I'm ten. All right, so number eight for me, I have two fractions separated by an equal sign. What do I do? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. You know what? Mm. I don't have to do the question like that. Let me not. Let me not do the cross multiplication way. Let me just. Eight to one can be written as. 
something in the, in base three down. Three to the how much? Three to the fourth. Three to the fourth is correct. <laughs> Seriously, I just did it. Let me see. All right, now when I'm dividing. And the bases are the same. What do I do with my powers? Subtract. Very good. I'm liking how a number of you are on top of things. Love the sound of it. Tell me if you agree with that. Three to the x minus four is equal to three squares. Yes, sir. Okay. I mean, there are other ways of putting the question. Um, it's just that I, I choose to read like that. So since the bases are the same, I'm going to equal the powers. Since the bases are the same, I'm going to equal the powers. And then I'm going to end up with x minus four is equal to two. I'm going to end up with x minus 4 equals 2. So therefore, x is going to be equals to 2 plus 4. x equals 6. And also, uh, I did cross multiply, but it's the same. Come on, you can cross multiply and get the same answer. You can cross multiply and get the same answer. Cross multiply and get the same answer. So. I want to choose to, to, to do the indices portion there because I want to bring across the point to you. You know, once I can write my question, both sides of my equation as an index, I am going to go for the indices method. The indices method is always much shorter than the logarithm method. Once I can't write both sides as the same as the same index, I know I have to go stuck with logarithms. But once I can write them as the same index throughout the question, I am going to go ahead and I am going to be using indices. Uh, that way you're ready to fire up my ready to Very good, Matthew. Um, <laughs> I'm not only shot, but you take um JC. You um you also trying to sing. I never knew I said in my <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen to me. When you're trying to sing, make sure that before you start singing, your mic close. All right? All right. Very good, though. I like, I like the energy that I'm getting from you. Very good, Matthew. Um, love, love what I'm seeing also. Very nice. All right. Um, so, by the, by the way, did you have the negative sign at the correct place, though, Matthew? Negative X, yeah, positive three. Very good. All right, let me just run through this one. It favors say I'm not going to be able to start. Well, no man, trust me, I am going to. I'm not spending more than four minutes on that because I want to spend the last 10 minutes on this example one, go through this example one, and then I can leave you with some questions. This is the end of the document. This is the end of the document. 
all I have is also solutions to the question. And I don't even finish the solution because I was really very tired. So I, I can tell you straight up that I will not do all the solutions to this question. So not to do it. All I would make sure I do is to have the answers. I have many of the answers I don't do answer for eight, nine, 10, and 11. Um, so please, you know, come and say, sorry, you never did the answer, because me not do all of the answer them. All right, let's go. Um, all right, let's just work through this one quickly. So this one says five X squares. Oh, sir, is the same thing. It's the same thing like what we talk about, so that when you have the unknowns, on either side that we have to go and do something else. All right, okay, yeah, but let us just check this first to see what is happening. So I have five to the X squared. Hmm, sir, five raised to the X squared. You can write it like that, too, sir. Mm -hmm. It's equal to 25 raised to the X times 125. No, sir, sorry, the first message is something like that. No worry about it. So what we're doing, we're writing five x squared is equal to twenty-five to the x. Remember, I am I can write all of this in base five with a base five, with a base five, not in base five, but with a base five. And what I'm going to do is to say five squares, but this five squares, which is a twenty-five, is still being raised to the x power, and this one, this this one hundred twenty-five is going to be five raised to the third power. So what happens now is that when I have a base raised to a power, which in turn is raised to another power, I multiply both powers. So I'm going to have 5 raised to the 2x. See it right here, so 5 raised to the 2x. And this is going to be 5 to the third, right here, so. And this is 5 to the x squared. What's going to can combine this, sir, because the bases are the same? Thank you for recognizing. So when I'm multiplying and the bases are the same, I'm adding my power. So this is going to be 5 raised to the 2x plus 3. See it right here, sir? 5 raised to the 2x plus 3. But, sir, since the bases are the same, we can increase the power because you have the same base right here and right here. So, very good. So, all I'm going to have now is x squared is equal to 2x plus 3. See it here? And then I'm going to rearrange to set, the, to, set it, to set the equation equal to 0. And I'm going to have x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And then I'm factorizing. Now, when I was doing this question, I, sh I, I wrote up the, the, the method of factorization because I know some of you may, for may have forgotten how to factorize. Um, I know some of you know how to factorize by inspection. That's where we are supposed to be going. We are supposed to be going through factorization by inspection. All right? So let's go. I'm multiplying the coefficient of x squared. What's the coefficient of x squared, sir? The number in front of x squared. So I'm multiplying the coefficient of x squared, which indeed is a magical one. The value of x is not one, but the number in front of x is one. I'm multiplying the coefficient of x squared by the constant. One times negative three is negative three. I need two numbers. When multiplied together will give me negative three, but when added will give me the middle number. And those numbers will be a negative three and a positive one. See here? Negative three and a positive one. Right? So the factors are positive one and negative three. So I am going to be substituting this negative two x for negative three x from this negative three and this one x from this one, minus three. So why did we have to do this? Because I want to factorize and I want to group them. See here, grouping, because I'm doing the method factorization by grouping. So I want to group them. In this case, I can't group nothing because one of them going to have two something and the other one going to have one. So I can't group nothing. So I have to split it out. So I can have two something in a one bracket right here. So, and then two something in another bracket right here. So, so I'm going to enclose these two in a bracket. Boom. Leave out the middle sign every time. Then I'm going to have the x minus 3 in the other parentheses right here equals 0. Then I ask myself the question, what is common here that is common there? It's going to be x. What is left? x minus 3. Then what is common here that is common there? Sir, so has to be 1. 1 is a factor of every something. Mm -hmm. So I check out the 1. What is left? x minus 3. 
What is common here? That is common here, x minus three. So I take the x minus three. What is left? X plus one. I am not here to teach you factorization. Factorization was CXC. Factorization was CXC. So you need to go and review this. I only place it there because I know you all may have a challenge remembering this. All right. So either x plus one equals zero, see here so, which implies that x is gonna be equals to negative one, or either x minus one equals zero, which implies x equals minus three. So those are the two values of x, negative one and positive three. Negative one and positive three. Those are they. Any question? No, sir. All right. Um, I'm going to allow good sense to prevail and not to, to go through this example. Um, I'll do that on, on Friday, all being well. I'll use, I have three hours, so I can use two hours to go through and finish all these and play around with the last hour for the quiz. Um, if there are no questions, I will say, just encourage you to, to do some work, guys. Um, one of the things that I want to say to you, that I've always been saying to you is, I, I take pride in preparing for my classes. You can see the level of preparation. The only way you can show your gratitude towards my preparation, the hard work that I put in preparing the document is by you allowing, not allowing dust to take it up, but that you're actually going to be using them. That you're going to be using the, 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 the handles that I send on a weekly or well, on, yeah, on a weekly basis. All right, so go through the handles. Get familiar with, 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 the, with the content in it, and you should be good to go. You should be good to go. Remember, those who fail to prepare should prepare to fail. Those who fail to prepare should prepare to fail. All right, if there are no other questions, I will just say have a good night and thanks for coming out and turning up. Bye, sir. Bye -bye. Okay, bye, sir. Thank you.